Today's session is titled, New Product Forecasting and Risk Assessment. How to deliver meaningful numbers for business cases and portfolio management. New product development professionals and managers have to provide new product forecasts and risk appraisals to senior management. To do this most effectively, these professionals and managers need to understand how to execute unique elements of new product forecasting and risk assessment, especially compared to typical best guess methods. The goal of this webinar is to provide insights for providing and managing these new product forecasts and risk assessments, and to lay out a clear path for improving and providing these important measures for making decisions and managing performance. Our presenters today are Ken Kahn, Director of Virginia Commonwealth University's Da Vinci Center, and Paul O'Connor, President and Managing Director of the ADEPT Group. Ken Khan is a well-known expert and top scholar in the field of innovation management and market forecasting. Now a marketing professor at Virginia Commonwealth University, he is also the director of the university's Da Vinci Center, which offers a variety of programs in product innovation and venture enterprise creation. Ken is the author of a recently published book, New Product Forecasting, and Applied Approach. Paul O'Connor, founder and managing director of the ADEPT Group, will share insights based on 30 plus years of helping product development organizations improve their productivity. A leading voice in the discipline of product line road mapping, Paul is widely published, teaches a wide range of master courses and workshops, and is a frequent speaker at professional organization meetings and corporate seminars. Ken and Paul, it's great to have you with us. I'll turn the session over to you. Thank you very much, Mike. It's, uh, I'm very glad to be with everybody today, uh, and uh, I'm sure Ken is too. Ken's going to be doing the first part of our presentation today on uh, forecasting, and I'm going uh, to jump in, in midway through on risk assessment and then tie it all together. The problem that most organizations face in product development metrics and measures is that we have two very bad numbers that usually come through. One is the top-line revenue forecast, and the other is, excuse me there, oh, top-line revenue forecast, and the other is the full technical risk assessment, and full risk assessment of technology and pro of projects and, and on the uh, commercialization. Our issue is about time and resources to get it done, and get it done well. Uh, the recourse to this is to set up methods and practices and, and approaches that can do it quicker, better, and more economically. Um, that's our goal, is to, sh to share with you a smarter way to do it and a more economical way to do it that can fit within process and do, it, do, these, uh, do these evaluations quickly. So our, our agenda today is first about forecasting in presenting some key challenges and compare different forecast methods as well as uh, managing the new product development forecast endeavor, the whole, whole effort toward it. And then we'll talk about risk assessment and specifically about what we refer to as factor-based risk assessment. Then we'll get into combining these two, forecast and risk assessment. Both are what we would consider the uh, opposite sides of the same valuation coin in product development. So with that, let me pass it over to Ken. Ken, welcome on board. Good afternoon, everyone. For those uh, on the East Coast and for those on the West Coast, good morning. Uh, we're going to start off with a polling question, so if we can activate that. We're going to uh, ask you a question regarding the challenges that you're facing when forecasting new products, and if you could select one of the responses. Whether one of the challenge or your major challenge is finding the time to forecast, uh, the second one, having the right data sources or even having any data sources, if you will, uh, fully understanding the complexity of the new product forecasting issue and the situation around the new product, credible information sources, or are you really finding a challenge with accuracy? So let's just take a couple. Of, let's take about 30 more seconds and see how people are voting on this.
And uh, right now it looks like with about 70% people voting, 38% are new product forecasting followed by having the data sources. So interesting to see that. Many people actually uh, find that the accuracy of the new product forecast is your big challenge. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and how all these other things. But it's interesting, everybody responded to each one of these, which is really the setup for new product forecasting. And let me see if I can uh, advance our slide. Uh, so in terms of challenges, there we go. We, uh, we really brought out what are the key challenges of new product forecasting in terms of time, data, complexity, credibility, and accuracy. These are all major challenges that we're facing. Um, it's interesting that when we were putting together a new product forecast, uh, time is not necessarily something we consider, but when we're, for example, one company I did some work with is dealing with 100,000 SKUs and you're adding another SKU to the mix, how much time can you really put towards developing a forecast for that type of product? Uh, data, of course, is a, an issue many times, and as you'll hear as we go through the discussion, data may or may not be available, uh, and the, the type of data that you're getting may not be something that you can readily analyze. Certainly the new product forecasting situation and the risk assessment situation is very complex, especially when you're taking into consideration the market and what are competitors going to do. And there's this notion of optimism and pessimism that are persisting within the process, especially optimism, which actually affects credibility during the new product forecasting process. And then many people, of course, bring up the issue of accuracy. So if we uh, look at some research that's been done around accuracy, we can find that, and this is rather dated, but there's been some studies that have been reported in the past five years uh, that have actually come very close to these numbers. And as we can see, even for a very, very incremental project, whether it's a cost reduction project or a product improvement project, uh, we're still running, these are accuracy estimates, so we're still running at 38 to 35% per, error, 28% error, all the way down to new to the world products at 60% error. And if we, if we look at the overall average for new product projects, we tend to find that the accuracy runs around 50%. So uh, one of the things to accept is that accuracy is a reality of new product forecasting. 